Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and this is one of our large crystal clear level 2 spot for no lenses that we're making for our university. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the proper way to frame a Fresnel lens or a piece of artwork. This is the best way to do it. First thing you want to do, you want to set your saw guide. I'm setting it to just shy of one and three quarters. This particular blade right here is a seven and a half inch blade. Most people use 10 inch saw blades on there. I like this because it has a, the saw blade is actually narrower on the seven and a half inch blades. You wanna make sure that you have eye protection on. What we're gonna be doing is ripping this. Now, I'm gonna show you the way that you make sure that you're perfectly centered. First thing you wanna do is just put a little nick in the wood. Now, if you flip it over, you notice that that lines up with the saw blade. You know you're right down the middle. So we're going to go ahead and... Now, something that I do that a lot of people don't do, I let the wood sit like this. There's nothing back here. If the wood did fly, there's no one that it's going to hit. I see a lot of people putting their hands close to the saw blade. That's something you don't want to do. So I like to just walk around. We now have ourselves two perfectly even two by four, two by four split in half. The next thing you want to do is set your saw guide to five eighths of an inch, or you can even go up to close to three quarters. You want to lock it down, and then you want to take your wood. Now, you're going to notice on the wood that we have a, uh, the edge that we cut and then the beautiful finished edge that the factory did or the lumber company did with their 2x4s. So we're going to keep this to the outside. That way, the finishing is already done. We don't have to do any sanding or anything like that. You want to take this. I like to put the type, the lettering, face down. You want to drop your saw blade. You want your saw blade to leave about a quarter of an inch to five sixteenths away from the top. So we're gonna move our guide back in. That's just to show you. So we are at five eighths here. I'm gonna lock it down. Is I'm gonna just put a, a rip cut in this. Again, I'm going to put the tight down. We're going to put the edge that we cut against the rail. What you want to do is drop your saw blade a little bit. We're going to put this cut against our rail. We're going to set our guide to seven eighths of an inch over here. So we've got it set to seven eighths. You want to crisscross these a little bit to make sure that you get the whole cut on this the wood's going to stick. Now watch this. See that right there? That's what you want. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. If your saw blade's right, you see how easy that cut is. And it should just fall right apart like that. You now have a rail that sits in there and you're going to notice the type even lines up perfectly. So you want that. We're going to do it one more time. got this part done. We're now done with our big saw. So now we're going to go over to the miter saw. And this is a part that a lot of people are afraid of. They're afraid of 45 degree cuts because normally you have to wrap a band around them to hold it together for several hours. We're not going to worry about that. There's a simple way of doing it. You can tell I use this a lot. Blah! I've got sawdust everywhere. You want your miter saw to be set at 45 degrees. You want the rail part that you cut, I like to keep them together like this, okay? Pinch them together so that they're lined up, roll them over, and you're going to put the rough cut that we did in so the nice round part, the, the factory part is out. You want to make sure all your cuts are good. Now these two match up. Now 
Now that that part's done, this is our lens that we're framing. A lot of people will spend a lot of time measuring, making sure it's perfect. You don't need a ruler at all for this. You just simply use the wood as a guide. For a whale, like this, all you do is come over to this edge. You want to take your lens or your material or your window frame, whatever you're doing, and you want it to just have like maybe an eighth of an inch right there. Just a little bit. If you do it too perfect, it's going to be hard to fit it in. You come over here and you mark just a little bit beyond it too. It's okay if you have a little play in there because you've got up to that much. You don't want to do too much or the lens will fall out, but you want a little bit of play in there. Now you come back over to your miter saw. You're going to notice my mark right here. Now I have a laser on this saw right there, but you just bring the blade down. You want to just cut leaving just a little bit of the black line behind. So I know that that's set right. Now this piece, that I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and cut these simultaneously. So I'm going to line that up perfectly there. We've got our piece locked in. Now watch this. We now have our first rail done and the insert rail. They're both done at the same time. They actually line up perfectly just like that. Now what you do is you take your wood and you want to rotate it forward. You're resetting the cut. So we're going to have a scrap piece like this. The cut is now reset. This is a throwaway piece. We now take this piece in and measure the long part. Got the gap there. We're going to mark it over here. And this is how we get the length for this. So we're going to go back out to the saw. I'm going to line these up the same way I did before. There is my mark right there. I'm going just a little bit bigger just to play it safe. Got it nice and tight. You want to make sure everything's nice and tight. We cut it. Now this piece right here is extra. I'm going to go ahead and keep it off to the side for a future project. We repeat the same process all over again. But this time what we do, we get our first cut. And we are going to use our first small rail that we made right here. You want to line it up right to the edge. What you do is you come down with your saw blade and you want to just trim one to the other. And make sure that this is stocked up against there. Real important. So now what we have are two identical pieces. These are our short rails. We reset the cut. Same thing again for our long piece. This ensures that they're identical, which makes squaring these very easy. What I have here is some wood glue. I use a water bottle. I have a two inch coarse drywall screw or coarse wood screw, and I have one and a quarter inch fine drywall screws. There's a reason why I use the fine ones for the finishing with this. First thing you want to do is take your long piece, one of the long pieces, and set it down. Then you match it up with the short piece, like this. Put a little bit of glue on there, and you want to make sure you do the long one this way. If you do the short one to a long one, and the long one to a short one, they won't match up, believe it or not. I also have an eight, one eighth inch drill bit. This is the only pre-drilling that we're going to be doing. This requires a little bit of hand strength. We put some glue in that joint right there. You want to grasp it nice and tight when you're level. You want to drive your eighth inch drill hole in there. And then we're going to take our two inch screw. And... There you go. This is nice and sturdy. This isn't going anywhere. This piece is done. We're going to repeat this one more time. I'm going to set this L off to the side. I'm drilling my eighth inch pilot hole and I'm putting my coarse wood screw in. We now have a little piece fell off, no big deal there. But what's important is this. Look right there. That meets up perfectly. There's no raised edge. These corners are right on the money. And this is solid. You now have two L's that are identical. They're solid. They're not going anywhere. Once that glue dries, it's a done deal. Those aren't coming undone. You take your wood glue, and on the two ends, you go ahead and put your glue. 
once these are put together, they're done. They're not going to have any problems. If your wood is, has a little bow in it, you'll notice that the corners don't perfectly match up, but the wood screw will draw it in for you. So what we're, what we're going to do for this step is grasp this nice and tight right here, and we're going to put our eighth inch hole again. You want to make sure you don't go out the side. You want to just go right in. And if your wood, if you have really hard wood, like if you happen to have a real heavy 2x4, you want to go a little bit deeper with the pilot hole because the wood will split. The harder the wood is, the more likely it is to split. Now our screw just drew our corner in. We're going to flip it around. We've got our glue already there. So we're going to repeat this with our 1 8 inch drill hole and our 2 inch wood screw. Now if you look at these corners, they're flush, 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 and this part right here is smooth, smooth, it matches up. When we take our Fresnel lens, in this case one of the level 2 custom lenses, it sits in there perfectly. Now here's the cool part, you don't have to go make more rails, they're already cut for you. So we're just going to press this one in, come over here, we're going to press this one in, our second one's in. If you look at that wood grain, it actually matches up because we did it. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be perfect like that, but it's kind of cool to do. And rail number two, the long rail. Again, look at the tight. See how the tight matched up? See how nice that is? We're going to go over here. And this one, the last one's usually a little bit on the tight side, which is good. But you're done. You're done with that part. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick. I've shown you this in previous videos, but when you deal with thin wood, especially this particular 2x4 is on the hard side. So what happens is a screw will split that. The solution to that is to pre-drill. In order to hold this in place, I have, these clamps have 50 pounds of force with them. They're super heavy duty. You don't need those. You can go with like 25 pounds, but we're going to just squeeze that down. These, this is a 25 pound clamp. So we've got that in place. That's going to pinch the lens, never going to sag on you, not going to happen. So what a lot of people like to do is drill, uh, pre-drill holes. I'm going to show you why I don't like to do that. I did on the, you have to do that if you're using uh, coarse screws, but we got our little pilot hole and notice all that sawdust that you have to deal with. And it's kind of a pain. So here's where our one and a quarters come in. Here's the trick. We got the wood. This is the trick that you want to do. I'm going to take this, without a pilot hole, start it a little bit so you grab some of the wood, then reverse your drill. Now you're stripping that hole out, boom, you just pre-drilled it with the, with the screw itself. You use the screw as a drill bit, and if you did it correctly, you can just go ahead and quickly get these done. So the first rail's already done. So we're going to move on. I like to work clockwise. It just seems to work better for me. Um, put the rail right in the middle. It's a good idea to put the clamp in the middle because that's where your screw hole goes. So you don't want um, your mounting hole goes there. So you don't want to have to deal with screws in the perfect center. So all I'm doing, right, reverse drill, drill, reverse, drill. Drill, drill. So it's a pretty simple process and it prevents you from splitting the wood. So we haven't used a measuring stick at all right now other than the guide on the saw because it's not needed. Only time you're going to need it it's when you put your mounting screw in. Now you don't have to do any dramatically weird cuts for this or crazy drill holes. It's pretty simple. You just want to make sure that you don't run into the lens. But we're going to show you that too. And we are done. Just like that. As quickly as this lens is good to go. And what's neat about this is if you do it correctly, this lens should stand up on its own 
without any help. That means that it's balanced. That means that the wood, the frame is done correctly. It's perfectly balanced. That's gonna stand there until something blows it over. So what we're gonna do is put our pilot holes in there. What I like to use is a one quarter inch drill bit. By the way, this drill is four months old. Give you an idea of how much we use these damn things. You wanna measure your lens. This particular lens is 36 inches along the long side. So half of 36 is 18. So you wanna mark your 18 inch spot right here. Make sure that you're working on the side where the rails are because that's deeper. This isn't perfectly centered. This front part's shallower because you don't need the thickness there. This back part is deeper. That gives you something to drill into. If you did it perfectly balanced, you wouldn't be able to have anything to, you wouldn't have a reasonable hole. You'd have to go very small. So we're gonna mark this. My pen just broke on me. Now, you've got your, hole, your, your marks done. All you do is take your drill bit right here Make sure you don't go into the lens. That's why it's important also not to have a screw there. If you look on the inside right here, see where the hole came out? All you have to do is take a screw like this and carefully slide it in there, and it's ready to mount to your frame. So there's no complex thing. This tightens to your frame. The screw goes right in there. If you did it right, it's not going to bump into your lens. If you do happen to come too close to your lens, you can take this screw, this screw and flatten that part on a sander and uh, that'll close the difference. Now we just have the other side. Okay, so we're going to drill and I'll show you how it comes out. You want to work away from the lens. So now this lens is completely finished. It is ready to go. We're going to take it outside if the sun's out and it is. Follow me. This is one of the level two spot lenses. We're going to test it out. Instantly catches stuff on fire. See that? This is one way of framing mirrors. You can frame just about anything. It's really quick, it's really easy. These will last forever. This one is going on a couple years outside. If you want to paint it before you can, you can do that. The next important thing is to build a stand. The stands that we do are right here. I have a video, the link is below, that shows you exactly how to do that stand. This is how you frame something. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy your videos.